Hey, this is Justin Morrison and today I'm reviewing the brand new FE 2.8 70 to 200mm GM OSS2 lens by Sony on behalf of BestBuy.ca. So first impressions on the FE 2.8 70 to 200mm lens. Um, fantastic build quality. Pretty much what you'd expect from a Sony lens or any Sony product, really. Excellent build quality. Um, it's actually a little bit lighter than I thought it was going to be. I mean, it's you know, as lenses go, it's a bit of a tank. But that said, for a 70-200mm uh, 2.8 lens, it's actually not that heavy. It's coming in around one kilogram. Um, which might sound like a lot, but as I say, for a lens of, of this focal length and this aperture size, it's really not that heavy. Um, that's important to me because one of the things I did with this lens is I put it on my, um, my DJI Ronin gimbal and, uh, and did actually manage to get some good shots with it. Um, probably not the most typical use of the lens, but, but nonetheless, it was, it was, it was doable, right? Um, so anyway, talking about some of the features on this lens, it's actually one of the most fully featured lenses I've ever used. Um, I can show you right here on the, on the barrel. It's got autofocus to manual focus switch. It's got full time DMF, which is basically where you, uh, you use, um, manual focus to override the autofocus. Um, so you can switch that on or off. It's also got a uh, focal range uh, limiting, no, I should say focusing distance limiting switch. Uh, it, you can either switch on the image stabilization or switch it off, whichever you prefer. And there is also three types, three modes of stabilization that the lens offers. I'm not going to go through what they all are because really that's just a little bit too much to get into for this short little review. Um, and the final switch down here is the iris lock switch, which allows you to lock your aperture. Um, so one of the things that Sony is now including on all of its new lenses, and I'm very happy about this as a filmmaker, is an aperture ring. These used to be much more common uh, in older lenses, um, sort of pre-digital film camera lenses, um, but they've come back Sony is incorporating them in all their new lenses. You also have the click on or off switch here, which means that uh, you can choose whether you want the aperture to change in steps or continually. That's a really major difference, whether you do use it clicked or, or declicked. And the reason is um, it allows you, as a, as a filmmaker, it allows you to change your aperture very smoothly to change your exposure while you're shooting. So there isn't the harsh stepping that you would see in a, in a clicked um, aperture ring. What else do I want to say about it? Oh, three more buttons to point out are here. One, two, and three. And these are the, uh, what, what Sony refers to as the focus hold buttons. You can assign a number of different features or functions to these buttons, but it is the same function for each. So if you decide to use focus hold here, it's the same thing for each one. That's what each button will do. It might be nice. Um, if you were able to assign a different task to each button, but that could also be kind of confusing as well. One of the things I wanted to point out here on the lens hood, this kind of huge lens hood, um, it's got a little window here, which you can push all the way up. And it took me a while to figure out what exactly this window is for, but I can tell you, that with the window open, it allows you to put your finger in and move your um, lens filter. If you're using, for example, uh, a polarizing um, lens filter, which often you, you might want to um, rotate, 
or a variable ND filter, which gives uh, different amounts of filter um, strength based on the position of the filter. So you can rotate it through this little window here, which is a really cool design and, you know, props to Sony for, for having that level of, of, um, of, of foresight. Um, you'll also notice here the, you know, the, the, the lens hood is locked on until you press this button here, which allows you to take it off. I'm not someone who uses the lens hood a ton, probably not as much as I should, but there you go. Um, what else do I want to say about this lens? I mean, when it comes to image quality, when you're working with a GM lens, which you'll know by the red G here, you're talking about pretty much the highest optical quality you could hope to get. Um, and that's what Sony delivers. Um, all in all, I'd have to say it was a pleasure to shoot with this lens. I used it uh, primarily to shoot video and that's something that Sony is very much focused on. They've integrated certain features into this lens, um, such as, uh, Um, Sony has made this lens very much f with uh, filmmakers in mind. So there are a number of features aside from just the, uh, the declicked aperture ring um, that are going to be of interest to uh, filmmakers. I'm not going to get into those here. They're kind of technical things which are hard to explain in a short time. But filmmakers are really going to be impressed by what this, can, this lens can do. One of the other things I noticed that was quite remarkable about uh, this lens, um, this is the focus ring here at the front, and it's very, very smooth. But the distance you need to move this in order to get from, you know, infinity to the minimum focus distance is surprisingly small. Like, you have to make very small adjustments to this in order to make very large adjustments to your focus distance, um, which is a really excellent feature. All in all, I'd have to say it was a real pleasure to shoot with the 72. <clears throat> all in all, I'd have to say it was a real pleasure to shoot with the 70 to 200. I shot video with it. I shot headshots with it. Um, and I just found it to be a very responsive, uh, very easy to use, um, very, you know, lots of features, um, but ultimately excellent image quality. And that's really what matters mo more than anything else. On behalf of the Best Buy blog, this is Justin Morrison. Until next time, peace out.